Hello everyone and welcome back. We're going to continue building out our color game. Right now we, we really have a game. I mean if we wanted to, this is a game. You can click it and play it. You can't reset it without refreshing the whole page, but it works. I mean our, our basic core functionality is there. So the rest of all these videos is going to be polishing it, adding additional functionality, adding the easy and hard mode, making it prettier, picking different colors, things like that. So in this video we want to accomplish a few things. First, we want to generate random colors for our array. And there's going to be two steps to that. 1A is going to be generate a random color function. And then 1B is going to be generate random colors function. And this calls the first one. The reason we're doing two of these instead of one is to make it a little bit more granular and make it a little bit easier whenever we're switching modes. We could do this all in one function if we wanted to, there's nothing wrong with that, but to keep things as simple as possible and as modular as possible, we're going to break it into two. After we've done that, step two is going to be to change the H1 or the title background to the correct color once picked. Just like over here, after you click the right one, this color is updated. Those are two things I'd like to accomplish. So let's go ahead and we're going to move our helper function section to the very, very top. Because as I mentioned in the previous video, you have to declare functions if you're using arrow functions before you actually call them. And it's, it's generally speaking best to put helper functions right after your constants. And the reason we're moving it above the constant here is because we're not going to have any constants. This is going away. We don't need that at all. Because we're going to generate random colors. So let's do that. Const generate random color. R-A-N-D-O-M color. It's going to be an arrow function. And this is going to generate a single random color. One random color. In order to do that, we're going to have to pick an R, a G, and a B values and they need to be between 0 and 255 and then just basically return that. So we're going to use the same trick we did up here with math.random and math.floor to get that. Const r equals math.floor because we always want to round it down, chop off that decimal. In this case math.floor and it's going to be math.random and we want it to be between 0 and 255. So we'll do 256, because remember, you, it's going to chop off the decimal, and math.random is exclusive. It does not include 1. So if we did 255, it would never be 255. Not a big deal in this use case, but we want to do things right. And I'll just duplicate that and change our G and B. So now we have our three variables. And just as a side note, generally speaking, you don't want your variable names to be just single letters. Some people do that, but it makes your code hard to read. However, in this case, because they're for RGB, it's pretty clear what they are, so that's fine. And then we're going to return a string of this. Right here we're going to use templates, template strings. Honestly, I don't remember if we've talked about template strings before because it's I've been making this course over, over the course of several months, so we may or may not have talked about template strings before. If not, go research them. They're fantastic. They make your strings a lot easier to work with. Quick rundown is you use the back tick instead of quotes. That's the number uh, under the tilde next to the, the number one on most keyboards at the very top left. Use the back tick and you type in whatever you want it to be. My sentence here. And then whenever you want to insert a variable, you put a dollar sign and curly braces. So I could do R right there. Something like that. And it would say my sentence here and then whatever that number is. So what we want to do is RGB, open parentheses, then we want dollar sign $R, comma, space. And remember, this space is important for the reasons we discussed in a previous video. Dollar sign braces G, dollar sign braces B. And we want to return that. And let's just call generate random color, just to see if it works, and console.log it. So refresh. Oh, it's trying to run the rest of the code. Um, 
it shouldn't matter if I would actually call it instead of just referencing it. Yeah, this runs first. So it gives me a random color. If I refresh over and over again, I continue to get random colors. You'll notice all of the values have spaces right there. And all of them are between 0 and 255. No matter how many times I refresh it, it will always be between 0 and 255, and all they're always random. So the next step, and I can get rid of this console.log, is to create our generate random colors array, plural. Const generate random colors equals, and this is the part where we're going to take in either three or six, because that's how many squares, and it's the reason we're doing it like this instead of just saying easy mode, hard mode, is so that if we wanted to expand this in the future, if you wanted to add a super hard mode with nine or a super easy mode with two or something like that, you could. So we're we'll just call this num. So the first thing we need to do is to make an array. Then we need to add num random colors to array. Num being this num. And then return that array. This is not the most efficient way to do this. You could all you could do all this on probably a line, maybe two, but we're going to do it this way for simplicity's sake. It's not always best to do least number of lines. You want your code to be readable. So let's just make let output equal an empty array. Then we're going to add numbers to that array. And to do this, I'm just going to do a for loop. For let i equal zero, i is less than num. Because remember, this is how many times. So if we put in three, we want it to we want it to run three times. Then i plus plus. What we're going to do is we're going to do output dot push. Remember our array function. We're going to shove those values onto the end, and we're just going to call generate random color. And then we're going to return output. So let me go ahead and just console dot log generate random colors. And we'll do it with six colors. Refresh, this still isn't going to work, but now we have an array of six different colors. So if we did three, let's say we were in easy mode, we now have an array of three items. So that is right here, sorted. And in order to fix this so it's no longer broken, we just have to set colors equals to generate random colors six. Save and refresh, and now we're working. Every time we refresh, we get a new random set of colors. There we go. Now we have a game that you can actually play, and it actually has a little bit more challenge to it. Last thing we want to do is change the title background to the correct color once you click on the correct color. So the background on this title right here, we want it to change to that color. So, inside our element selection, we're going to select that title. And what did we call it? Did we call it title? We didn't give it a title. We didn't give it an ID or anything, but it's the only H1 on the page, and it's going to remain the only H1 on the page, so we can just select it that way. Const title equals document dot... I'm just going to do query selector H1. Now we have the title. So down here, when we are setting up our squares event listeners, because again, we want it, this to happen when we click on it, so we put it inside the click callback function. So if the click color is correct, we're going to change all the colors to that color, and then we're also going to change the title. Dot style, dot background color, equals picked color. Now let's see if this works. There we go. All right, it worked. Cool deal and it continues to work awesome. So that is it. We changed that and we started generating random colors. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be happy to help. Thanks.